So we call Toronto the big smoke because uh, there's always a plume of haze over the city from all the exhaust, I guess. So we're gonna spend the next few days here in Toronto uh, checking out the NAFA sale. So home, home for the next couple days is the Crown Plaza and we're going to the uh, NAFA auction right here on this side. There, Casey, because look at that. We made her. Yes, 460, 460, 460, you mentioned 460, 460 in the center, all three, 460, 470, yes, 470 in the aisle, 470 in the aisle, all three, 470 in the aisle, two, two, last fire, about 13, start off at 240, try me at 220, how about 200, 180, where are we, 170, 150, 150, yes. 150, we'll get a bit of 150, 150, your message is 150, 150, all through at 150. The VSL means very slight damage. Like about 14, start off at 180. How about 170? 160? 150? And 40? Yeah. 140, we'll get a 140, 140, oh, 45, 145, 145, 145, all through at 145. 23. That's like a $500 wolf. $250 to $700 range. Okay, it's like a Western type wolf. It's as big a wolf just about, but it's not nearly as silky. Feel it, just feel it. See how soft that is? Now mm -hmm. feel as... Oh yeah, very okay. big difference. And then you get, then you get like, a, this is like an Eastern type wolf. You know, and again, you can see how much the quality between the three vary. You know, it's a little more coarser than a western, way off from a, from a silky arctic. But that's your three types of wolves, basically. But that one's, on average, if it's a good wolf, can be 500 bucks. This a good one is, a very top end western one will be like 250 if it, you know, that's a really high end one. And then the eastern is like a hundred dollar wolf or less. A really, really good eastern would be like 150. And then you have black wolves, which bring really good money because it's kind of a novelty. Every section will produce black wolves, and they usually, if handled properly, they bring a good price. And handled properly, like this is not bad, but it's better if you cup the, the paws. I'll find one. The lips are done really good on this one. For taxidermy, you need this material, the inner lip, so that they can attach it to the mold properly. And you need small eyes and the ears done properly. Those are critical on it. I'll find a wolf with good paws there. So for a wolf, a 
handling, that's a really good job because everything's there for the taxidermy person to make a rug or a mount out of it. Your high-end wools will go for a mount. Your secondary wools will go for uh, rugging. And then your uh, ones that are incomplete and not as good quality what could go for potentially as a wall hanger. And very few of them are used for trim. You trim on parkas or whatever. But you can see on this, this western, you can see it's, it's not a bad looking wool in the back, but when you look at the belly, look how poor the belly is. You know, it's very uh, reddish, rubbed out, weak. But very well handled. This is a very well handled wolf. The other thing that you got to watch on wolves, which can knock the price, is the tail. You can see how the tail's been rubbed out on this. So that'll really drop the price on a, on a wolf. Otherwise, a great pelt, but very poor tail. Uh, consideration when the guys are buying wolves is they're looking at the bellies all the time. So and how red they are and how, how much fur they have on the belly. So it's just something else to look like. Well done. Claws are perfectly done on these. Pads are complete. You know they're they're easy. You know they're they're nice and dry. Always looking at the tails to make sure the tails are complete. A rubbed out tail will, will drop the value of a wolf considerably. Because those got great tails. Always looking at the inside lip to make sure this material's here. Uh, one thing about wolves is they're mainly sold one at a time. So it takes a long time for them to go through the catalog when you have a couple hundred wolves to sell. It takes hours, but uh, and that's why the prices will vary because they're sold individually on the characteristics of each wolf. And you'll see some prices jump up $200 on one wolf to the next and that's because the buyers see something in it that they really want and they go right after it. So couple of things of interest. So one of the tracking methods as you go through a catalog or through the auction is the, the lot tags. They're sold individually and each one has a specific tag on it that identifies it in the catalog to the buyers. These are select wolves, lot, top lot one and then number eight in the, in the thing. This is a skin tag that identifies it to the trapper and you can see it's barcoded. It's well stapled on, it goes right through, okay? So it's not gonna fall off. It's a, the method that they use here is a very high, heavy duty staple on them. And generally they always staple them on the same foot so that when they're scanning them into the system that the person running the scanner will know which, which where to look real quick on the wolf to add it to the inventory. The other thing that's really important on wolves is the size. You can see in this one it's a four extra large. It's a top-down system when you sell, so the uh, big sizes, better quality goods will sell first and bring better money. Something else in big consideration when you're buying wolves is the size. This is a 4X compared to an extra large. It's a pale compared to a tawny. So a tawny has almost every color under the sun. It's black, it's brown, it's gray, it's white, it's almost bluish. Very, uh, a lot cheaper wolf than one of these. This is an arctic pale type, plus again it's the silkiness of the skin. Like you can see I can bury my hand in here, no problem. Whereas, you know, it doesn't bury anything because it's a coarser, flatter type of skin. So that's an eastern type wolf compared to an arctic type wolf. They're all wolves, but in different areas they evolve to whatever they're surviving on. Bergwin's law means further north you go, the bigger the animal. So this is uh, north of, basically north of the tree line. These guys are in the boreal forest. So you can see a big difference. This guy's probably a caribou eater. This guy here is probably a beaver eater for the most part. So on the racks, when they do it, they, they're selling them for the most part individual. They're really careful. You can see they got saran wrap around it. And that's to protect them being moved around on the floor because they're so big. If you don't put them on the inside, the potential is that the claws could get damaged. So when they store them or they bring them out for display, they're gonna put them inside like this guy. Okay, and then it then it protects it protects the claws from being damaged. Claws on a wolf are very important if they're going to use them for taxidermy purposes. So these are more lower quality wolves because they're incomplete. The bottom lip's gone off them. There's no claws, no pads. So very, you can take a depending on what shape this 
wolf doesn't look too bad overall, but it'll bring a lot less of a price because it's missing all those parts. The market, the top market for wolves is taxidermy, followed by uh, rugging it, and followed it by uh, wall hangers in the tour straight. So this is the best this can do is a wall hanger in the tour straight. And nobody's going to rug this one because it's incomplete. So it really lowers the value if they're incomplete like that. Just looking at the Wolverines a little bit, and, uh, when a buyer comes to a sale, the Wolverines are on display, and it's a top-down system, so we start off with the biggest and the best fur quality first, and then you sell all that size, and get to your poor quality ones, then you go to the next size and do the same thing over again. So what we're looking at is, uh, this is the top Wolverine in the sale, it's a 5XL. The lot number 91, so one is the first lot, and you look at it, and then the buyer can see for quality. You know, you're looking for complete skins, the lips on, taxidermy is the main market again. This is the next size Wolverine sort of thing, and it's, again, it's, it's a top-down system, so they're, they're going to look. So, things that make Wolverine bring more money is, is the quality of the diamond on the back. You can see how this one is framed. It's still a rel relatively dark skin, but it's got the, the diamond is more pronounced than say if you look at this diamond on it. So, just give you an example. So these are five X's. And uh, a few pages into the catalog, you get the extra large. So these would be selects. I'll find the 503, which be which would be an extra large, extra dark select, and I'll, I'll put it on. There's two different Wolverines. That's a 5XL, and that's just an extra large. So again, it's a select skin. It's a well covered skin, well done, well handled, but it's just size that's going to make the price difference. And uh, we'll watch the Wolverine sale a little bit later on here and we'll see what the difference is between uh, this lot, number one, and, and this lot, uh, 5003, and this is 4902, so we'll see the difference. I'm picking these two because the color is basically the same, they're kind of darker Wolverines, but just the size difference will probably mean probably 100 bucks, maybe 200 bucks difference in the price. So something to watch for in the Wolverine is you can see how the, the Skinner's peeled the inner lip. On this one it's missing the inner lip. He didn't trim it properly so that loses the value of the Wolverine a little bit. Still a really good job with the paws but just that little detail will cost him a few bucks. So in the catalog this Wolverine here is marked as an extra pail and again it's that patch that what they call a diamond on the back that makes it more pronounced. The buyers generally like a one that's got more contrast on it. This one is a little bit darker, and the diamond is not quite as uh, stand out quite as much as this this guy here is an extra pale. They have clarity in them, so you can have a pale clear or a pale off. This one's a little bit off. It's not not as sharp contrast as, as uh, it could be. And what I mean by pale is that you'll get some yellow in the in the white, so it, it's not a very clear clarity. A couple of Wolverines, some real do do not do's on Wolverine because the primary market for Wolverines is taxidermy. You want to make sure the bottom lip is on. Probably lost half the value of this Wolverine and all it can really be used for now is trim on a parka, which there's still good demand for, but there's no claws, no bottom lip, so the value, you know, it's otherwise it's a very nice Wolverine. Versus something that has the bottom lip on and has the claws complete double the value because you, your markets you can use it for a rug you can use it for taxidermy this guy here basically is either a tourist trade wall hanger or it's trim on a parka because the dropper didn't take the time to leave that attached and like i said there's no claws whatsoever on this guy so the real do's and don'ts in, in taxidermy type goods wolves wolverines bears they got to be complete if you want to get top dollar for it so what's going on here uh, today is the sales started. The buyers have come in a couple of days ahead. We call them inspection days. 
and they get to look at the goods. This is a catalog. I have a couple of different catalogs with the different species in it. And each Wolverine is lauded and given a number. And what a buyer is able to do is come and look at the goods individually. So that's why you'll see a variation in the price. The buyers will look at it and they can, they can decide for themselves what it's worth. And it really helps with the, uh, with the auctioning. And then that's when you'll see a $230 uh, Wolverine or a $500 Wolverine. It's because the buyers looked at them and they can tell the value of each good like that. So catalogs and, and inspection days are important because it really makes a difference in the auction room when we actually start selling the goods. And again, taxidermy is, is uh, most species for taxidermy, they have to be really pay attention to the handling. That's what's really important about it. If you screw up in the handling, it really lowers the price. Wolverine, 224-901. Let's start the bidding off at 450. 450 anywhere, 450. How about 400? 400. 380. 380 I have on my right. I think that's 380 on my far right. All done at 380. Huh? 390 now. 390 I have in 400. Right. 400 on my right. I think that's 400 on my far right. 410 now. 410 on my left. Any advance in your 410, 420 now. 420 right. in the center, 430 on my far right. Any advance in this 430 on my far right, all done at 430. Lotto 2, let's start this one off at 400, 400. 360. 360 start, 360, 380, 390, 390, 400, 400 on the right, and now 410, 410. Any advance on 420 on my right, 420 on my right, all done at 420. Lotto 3, let's start this one off at 400, 400. 360. 360, I'll start. 360, 370. 370, I have 380, 390 on the far left, 390, 400, 400 on my right, any events on this 400, all done at 400. Lot 04, let's start this one off at 380, 380 anywhere, 380. 370, 370 in the center, 380 now, 380 against you, 390 in the center, 390 in the center, and he gets on his 390 in the center, all done at 390. Lot 5, let's start this one off at 380, 380. I'll go 370, 370. 360, 360, 360 bit on my left, and he gets on his 360 on my far left, all done at 360. Lot six, let's start this off at 350, 350. 20. 320 I have, 320 okay. now, 330, 330, 340, okay. 340 on my right. Any advance in this 340 on my far right, all done at 340. Lotto seven, let's start this one off at 340, 340. 320 I have, 320 I have on my right. Any advance in this 320 on my far right, all done at 320. Lotto 8, let's start this one off at 320, 320, Up front. 320 I have, any advance on this 320, 330 Sandy? Nope, 320 is here, now 330, 330 I have behind you Phil, 340 okay. now, 340, any advance on this 340, I'll go to 340. 350. We have a 350, 350, and 360, 360, 370, 370, 370, 380, 380, 390, 390, 390, it's net, 390, 400, no, 390, 390, net, 390, yes, all through a 390. Yeah. Okay. Lotto 2, start off at 280, 280, 280, and 280, 290, 290, 290, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, 300, Lotto 4, start off 5, 250. 
Try a 240. Up. 240, I would have to 240, 240, 250, 250, 250, up. and 60, 260, and 70, 270, up. 280, 280, 290, 290, up. 300, I've been at 300, 310, 310, 320, 320, 330, 330, 40, 340, 50, 350, 60, 360, 360, fail, 360, all through at 360. I'm in the back here of the warehouse looking at some uh, black bears. There was a pretty good black bear sale yesterday. And I'm going to show a couple of do's and don'ts in bears and try to help guys out if they're thinking about harvesting a bear and sending it into the fur market. Number one issue is uh, don't send in fall bears. I know you guys think there's fur on them, but there's no fur compared to a, to a spring bear. Spring bears are really the ones that the market wants. If you can find out of markets for, for fall bears, go ahead. Uh, if you want to, if you harvest a trophy bear and you want to make it into a rug, go for it. But I recommend a spring bear way over the fall bear. And then what becomes really important after that is the fur hen. So this bear here, it's case skin the head. The lips, the inner lips are all there. The ears are done really good. Complete ears, right down to the butts and everything. The eyelids are nice and tight. You can see there's, it's all there. The paws are done really well. All the materials there to do a bear. It's a nice heavy bear. You put your hand in, the, in his back there, you really pluck. Stick a pencil in it, and it just gets buried. Well, that's the type of bear they're looking for. The fellow that harvested this bear did a really good job. You can see he's, he's cleaned it up. There's no blood, there's no needles and, and stuff. A lot of times bears come in and they're really dirty. He did a super job on the head. This, but, this bear will definitely go for either a full mount or it'll go for a, a, a taxidermy rug. Well done and exactly what the market wants. This, like I said, this bear is not a huge bear, but it sold for 450 US dollars, which is good money. the ears and the eyelids material the nose the nose butt there's like two inches of fur there okay so in this lot there's two bears they're almost the exact same size as the bear that sold for four hundred and fifty dollars but they're fall bears and they're not handled quite as nicely so these are $70 bears compared to $450 bears. And one of the main reasons that you can see the dirt, they're still full of dirt and everything. The head's done all right, but not great. He, he decided to split it instead of casing it. I recommend that you case it. The ears are done all right on the bear, but it doesn't have the complete butts like the, the other one does. And you can see the eye material, is not, there's not quite as much there as, as what there was on the bear that's really, really been done properly. The big kicker for this type of bear is the amount of fur that's in the back. See? That's the difference. So when you touch it, there's no, there's no oomph, there's no plush to it. It's just a fall bear, it's flat. It's got guard hair on it, but it's got no real under fur, so that's what they're really what they're looking for. The bear market wants heavy bears, and that's a spring bear that you harvest in the spring, not a bear that that, uh, that eat blueberries and whatnot all summer and it's it's rubbed and rubbed and a fall bear just doesn't cut it. Even if you catch it in November, it's harvesting it in November, it's still not as good a bear. Get it in a spring bear, uh, it's way, way more plush. It's been laying in the den all winter and it's just a far superior bear. So bears are sold individually and when they sell bears individually, the buyers get to look at each bear and I, again, the difference between a fall bear and a spring bear, $70 bear, same size, a $450 bear spring bear. Flip it. And then... You know, there's a bunch of knife cuts here which take away from the value. The pad's been done, it's been cut out. So it's harder to work with something like this to turn it back into a rug or to a mount than it is to work with something like that. So handling is really critical. The other thing that you notice in this guy, I believe, no, not this one. Not so bad, but they use nails to nail it on the board, which is fine, but just be careful where you put the nails. If you put the nails where the hair is very short, it's hard for the taxidermy guy to hide that and fix that to make a rug or a mount out of it. So 
but you have to use paint and putty and, and try to cover it up. So try not to put nail holes. Like if you look at this spare head, there's not a single nail hole because he cased the head. So it's really easy for the taxidermy person to work with that and do a really good job. Come out with exactly what they want. Too much material is better than not having enough material. Not enough material then, then it just, just doesn't work. So just as an example, this is a rugged bear, and that's why it's so critical to make sure the eyes are done right, the ears are done right, the material for the lips are really critical. A lot of guys don't take the time to split the inner lips, and that's why it's really critical. When you want to make a mount, I mean they're plastic teeth and plastic tongue and glass eyes and that, but they need to have the material to attach it properly to the mount. That's, that's an end product. And it just, it, these are just good examples to show you kind of what will happen, like rug bears, just what your bears. That, those bears are sold for $450. I'll guarantee you they'll either be full mounts or they'll end up being a rug. Uh, 